Whenever Zimbabwe holds elections, the issue of free and fairness and its credibility has become central. And uh, it is not surprising because since 2000, we have had electoral processes that have always ended up in courts, including situations that happened in 2008 in, uh, where so many people uh, were killed and the election itself was invalidated to end up having a, a, a government of national unity. Also, if you recall in 2018, the process was uh, right, quite peaceful until the election day, but after the election day, there were protests uh, because of delays in announcing uh, of, of voting results. And on the 1st of August, the army went onto the streets and six people were killed. So the issue of Zimbabwe the election and the issues of violence associated with it is quite uh, topical and problematic. Also, just on Friday last week in Glenview, an opposition supporter was killed, allegedly by Zanu PF supporters. This is something that should not happen in an election season that is free and fair. Luckily, the police have reacted uh, uh, quite swiftly this time around and up to 10 people have since been arrested regarding that case. The case of the, the issue of the voters' role is one that uh, many people have complained about uh, because up to now, the it's the provisional voters' role that is being issued out. So people still wonder whether uh, the, the voters' role is, that is provisional is the one that is going to be used. Then um, the other complex issue is that the courts have been central in this election uh, to determine even the, the, the candidates themselves. In Ulawayo, we saw the court of attending uh, a lower court that had banned, uh, disqualified 12 uh, potential uh, MPs. Uh, and the courts are still in the, uh, the with the case of Sevia Kasukwere, who is still challenging his, uh, his disqualification. So when all those happen to those that are candidates, the issue of free and fair election then comes into, into play. We hope that uh, the, the, the observers the, that have been invited are also noting this. And by the way, uh, we should applaud uh, the, 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 the sitting president for inviting observers, including from countries that have imposed sanctions on Zimbabwe, to say, come, see, we want to have a free and fair election. Uh, I think he means it. If he could invite the EU again, that wrote, uh, that uh, whose report was actually uh, criticizing the way the elections were done last time. So we hope that uh, the, 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 this election on the 23rd of August is going to leave to the bill. But the questions remain. The, 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 the situation on the ground, the opposition has had a number of rallies that have been discontinued or banned by the police. They have less numbers, uh, they have more numbers than those that uh, they belong to the, the number of the ruling party that have been banned. Also, the media space. Um, the government controlled media space, the Herald and the ZBC, are quite clear in terms of uh, who they support. They give very little space and mainly in the negative when they are talking about the opposition. So the, the, on that level, there is no level playing field in terms of the media. Uh, luckily and uh, fortunately, we now have social media. So as long as uh, people can communicate uh, via social media, it has been used as a tool to counter the over-reliance on the state-controlled media. The issue of fear uh, is perennial in Zimbabwean elections. Uh, in some seasons, elections means war in Zimbabwe. The, there's many cases of violence, torture, uh, human viol rights violations are committed uh, and um, political violence is prevalent. But this time around we have seen uh, uh, that this is not happening in the level that it used to happen. So we, we hope that uh, this, the, the peace that uh, is there uh, it continues. Every election in any country gives people a new hope. New hope for a new mandate to the sitting president or a change of government. Those are the two main things, especially if you're a multi-party democracy. 
The purpose of holding election is a, draw, a, a, a scorecard to the sitting president and also a potential chance for the, for the opposition. So it is interesting in that case. And they consider where the economy is, where the level of unemployment is, including of graduates, where the inflation is, we have the highest inflation in the world. Certainly, uh, some people look at this election as a chance to try something new. But the Second Republic prides itself also as a republic that has gone to rehabilitate roads and infrastructure. It has built dams and they are using these as an example of the base on which the economy will improve. So it, it's, a, it's a congestion of um, ideas and possibilities between the ruling party and the, and the triple C. So this election, we hope that it will be free and fair to provide the citizens now to choose a candidate of their choice to go to take the country forward. I would do not want to substantiate on uh, some of these uh, uh, reports and allegations because this is a, a, a political season that is now in full swing and hot and uh, in a world now uh, where, where we have fake news, I would wish that whenever the, 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 such cases are there, the police must play its role in a non-partisan manner to provide security to everyone. And the political parties themselves must continue with the voter education until the last day to tell the citizens that your vote is your secret. The rest now becomes the issue of, um, of uh, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. But like I said, in the past, this is, uh, the Zimbabwe uh, election season has always been controversial because of intimidation, because of violence, because of targeting and threats. So these are not new things if they are happening. However, they are happening at a lesser extent compared to what it used to. And we hope that the election observers that are on the ground at the moment should be going and uh, identifying and, uh, uh, and observing on such reported cases so that they are out in the open uh, and people should be free to choose any leader that they wish so. I want to base my predictions on uh, Afrobarometer findings. If voting had happened in May, uh, it was President Mnangagwa who was going to win. Uh, though we have got a 27% of people who did not want to say who they would vote for. Now between May and August, like they say in politics, a day is too long in politics. The campaigning that has been happening may swing people in, in different directions. I think it's so clear that the two, it's a two horse race, this election. It's President Mnangagwa versus Nelson Chamisa. The challenge is, is one of them going to win outrightly to avoid a runoff election. I think that is the, the wish for both. So we wish them well in their campaigns and we wish Zimbabwe well to hold a free and fair and credible election. Uh, like I said, as long as people are complaining about violence like what we witnessed and people are complaining about the voters role and people are complaining that their names are on the voters not on the voters role then the credibility would be put to question so let us hope that on voters day people will be able to vote in their numbers and choose their next leaders